Hey everybody, what you're about to listen to is a special edition of Knights of the Rolled Table, but this episode contains no story, no characters, no D&D whatsoever. What this is, is a discussion of episode zero, and things you might want to include in an episode zero discussion that you do with your own groups, with a particular emphasis on creating an environment for you and your players that feels safe and supportive and great for being creative and having fun. We hope that that will be very useful to you and encourage your own fun, awesome, safe gaming. But if not, just you can go ahead and skip to next week's episode, season three, episode one. Hello, Knights of the Rolled Table. Welcome back to today's show. This is kind of a bonus episode because we're easing into uh, an every other week release schedule for season three to in, in order for us to like invest and survive this thing in the long term. I think Weston and Chris, uh, especially in season two, <laughs> I was impressed that we kept to a weekly schedule, but there was some close calls and late nights Like there. a machine. Oh, Ding! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's gone awesome. And the effects and all of the things that are getting added into episodes are awesome. But in order to make sure we keep up with that for the long term and also have time to grow and expand and maybe try some new things yes and get sick now and then (laughs) we're gonna we're gonna slow down the pace and go to an every other week episode uh release date but to kind of add ease you into this what we have today is we're gonna do kind of a session zero and more importantly this is meant to be kind of like a a discussion of session zeros and how groups can uh what groups should include in a session zero and what you might want to consider in your own game so there's certain things about us because we've recorded almost 30 episodes or more that you would usually do in a session zero, which is like, what are your characters going to be? And what is the world going to be that we don't really necessarily need to cover? So uh, to start off, we should go through who's actually here sitting around the table and go around real quick. So Zach DMing season three. Uh, I'm Chris. I'll be playing Gravely. I'm Weston. You don't, yeah, don't say characters that we don't know yet, but he is not going to be coach. (laughs) I'm Jen, and I'm back here as Maya. And I'm Jeff. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa, okay. That's who we have present. Darn it, I don't like that. (laughs) (laughs) So so what are some things that kind of like, let's create a list of uh, if you're going to have a session zero, which if people have no idea what that term is, that's like getting together and meeting to kind of like talk about your game before you do an actual like session of of gaming to kind of talk about stuff and how you want to do it. So what are some things that uh, are important to include in a session zero? Snacks. (laughs) Snacks. <laughs> Snacks. That is that Most is exactly. I, I have that written down. Yes. I was just going to say I think it's important really just uh, to have an opportunity especially as a DM to allow your players to voice where their priorities are and maybe where some of their boundaries are. Um, whether that's okay, you know, we want to, we're, we're really comfortable with role play. Like let's do a lot of that or, you know, we want to be a little bit more combat focused. Um, and just making sure that that communication is open and that you can kind of tailor your campaign to your players. Cause some people are a little less comfortable with really role playing and, and diving into that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Like what kind of game is this is I think the core thing for a session zero, which these days can really start with recruiting players because part of the Renaissance of tabletop RPGs right now is I think people can meet each other online and you can really get in where it's not just like, okay, I need three other people <laughs> in my town who are willing to do this and we're just going to be what we're going to be. But you can really be like, I want to play this game. But I want players on this level and I want to be able to meet Wednesdays at five o'clock Pacific time. And you can gather up people online to do like an online campaign on roll 20 or, or something yeah. to do anything you want. I want to be a role play heavy game. I want to do no role play. I want to do whatever. There's really just like an unlimited number of people out there if you're willing to really look. But I think that's important to mention because I think there are a lot of online campaigns and probably some in-person ones where it's like, hey, we just need another player. Do you want to play? And and it's very last minute. And maybe it's an experienced player. Maybe it's somebody new where they're just like, well, I have an idea and then you're going to jump into it. But I think it is important to have this 
pre-campaign conversation of what do you guys want to do as a DM to be open to here are some new people that are at my table, whether they're your friends or not. Uh, you have to be willing to make it about your players and just what well, that's been said before, but it's important to restate that as, as be willing to sacrifice some things that you might have planned. Uh, don't over plan and, and, you know, listen to what people want to do, whether they're brand new or whether they've been your friends and experienced players for a long time. I think also telling your players about the world itself um, is really important. Hey, I want to run a very low magic game. I want to run a very uh, intense combat game where you guys need to roll secondary characters because you're going to die. You know, you know, like, <clears throat> so as a DM, it's important that you're having fun. If you as the DM are not having fun, mm -hmm. the, the game is over. Like, it's, it's done. So you have to make sure that you are running something that is going to be enjoyable for you to run and that the players on the other end of it are also going to be having a good time with that uh, because DMing is, uh, can be very taxing. Mm -hmm. And if you're not getting rewarded uh, by, the, by the players or, or by the world or whatever it is, you're going to get burnt out really fast. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important from a player perspective to understand, oh, uh, it, it's okay if I don't want to run, go do this campaign with this friend. It doesn't mean I don't like them. It just means that this isn't the style of game that I usually like. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really important when you're doing that because you're going to be spending whoever knows how many hours oh, yeah. doing this that you as a player, are, uh, you want to be having fun. This is supposed to be an enjoyable experience mm -hmm. uh, for both you and the DM. Yeah, and most people are probably fairly open-minded in terms of like what you want to do, but there's probably a few things that any particular person has that they definitely don't want to do or just aren't very interested in. To, in. So just speaking up about that early on, and I think, yeah, especially as the DM, if there's something you really, really want to do, you better make sure you're very clear about that and people are genuinely on board for it. But if you, what you really, really want to do is get together with your friends and have a good time and meet the, whatever they want to do, then awesome. Then get together and ask, hey, what do you guys want to do? And put together a campaign based on that. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is that a good time also to talk about... Um, comfort level at the table and limits and, and that, that sort of thing. I mean, we, th there's been a lot of talk in the community about, you know, what's safe at the table and are you going to curse? Are you not going to curse? Mm -hmm. You know, is there sex involved? Is there not like, a, like what, what, what is safe essentially? And I think that's super important to lay on the table. Mm -hmm. Actually. Yeah. That's definitely something I want to talk a lot about. So before we get into that, we just bridged into the most important parts of the conversation, but like going back to like a few things that we specifically don't need to talk about, but you probably shouldn't have session zero. We said snacks, actually. That's something I wrote down. Like, hell yeah. The logistics, <laughs> the logistical things I think are really important. Things like, what's our schedule? What's our availability? When can we meet? What are we going to do? If somebody can't make it, what's our plan going to be? Are we going to like mm -hmm. pretend their character's not there? Are we going to cancel? Are we going to do some other game for that day? That's an important thing to kind of like lay down. But yeah, like, who's going to bring snacks? If you just like, ease into like one person always brings snacks because it's important to them and everybody lets them eventually that's, that's gonna Jen like hurt feelings that's yes me. that's yeah. jen i just made these guys eat we just had ice cream, cream in the break because <laughs> jen brought ice cream uh, i have popcorn too if you guys want some. Yeah. Oh, awesome. you know what i would like the popcorn yeah jen's very sad yeah, we can't have like uh veggie trays and chips Crunchy and things foods. that crunch because we we're recording one. Yeah. <laughs> i think he was just kidding jen Oh. To be clear, I was this not. Is, this is not you a went to get kid. snacks right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is right oh, there they are. Right, we're gonna yeah. record. We're gonna eat popcorn. Well, they're there. They're there. You can see them. Uh, I, I was gonna talk about scheduling real fast because yeah. that can be a huge like barrier. Like it, it's a it's a joke in the community that nobody can ever make it to a session, right? Can we have so, a moment of silence for all the sessions that are three in. <laughs> all the campaigns that are three three sessions in. <laughs> yeah. Press F to pay respects. Um, <laughs> So pour, pour out some popcorn for the homies. <laughs> there's there's some really great tools that you can use to make this easier. And uh, one tool that I've, we've used in our other campaigns, something called Doodle, uh, that allows you, and it, it can even import your existing schedule from your calendar. And it just puts it right in there. And it tells you when you are available and when you're not available. Uh, so Doodle is a really great tool. Uh, obviously, group chat with uh, just with that one campaign can be huge. I think also with the one uh, one of the ones that Weston runs that I'm in is uh, with with our friends is uh, 
being willing to meet up in person. But also if you're not like we've done a couple of roll 20 uh, sessions where we're all, it's just more convenient to like, let's just stay at home and do the session online because of scheduling or timing. It would just not be as conducive to drive and meet up uh, for whatever reason, or we have one player that's in another state. Um, you and guys so- let, uh, I think Jeff and I, or was it Zach? I forget. But there were some of us that you let jump in on one of those Roll20 sessions, mm-hmm. and that was yeah. super yeah. fun. Yeah. That was rad. It was Jeff. Uh, Jeff and you. I, I had never done one of those, and it yeah. was like it was it was like I get to be on my couch drinking wine and playing D anD D with <laughs> all the good things, uh, guys. Like, what are we doing here lot. with dice and like <laughs> yeah. in a chair? It checked a lot of boxes. <laughs> there, I, there's a lot of campaigns, especially a lot of streaming campaigns that are all done like that. You should definitely take some time to do some in person sessions if that's They're all the you've best. done. Oh, There's yeah. so much fun. It's great to read the room and like feel the energy of everybody there and uh, it, it's it's huge. But but also be okay with, you know, doing even if you're local, you know, it's okay to do like um uh roll twenty or Skype or whatever you're doing, Discord. More D D is good D D. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And having a couple different media, uh this group initially like we started a text campaign and um, doing it on Facebook Messenger. And just we experimented with this format of uh, just running it over text. And the DM would do a lot of the roles and kind of the honesty system. And because we had such disperse, uh, you know, d- diverse, schedules. diverse schedules um, that we were like, well, let's just do it on over text. And it actually was really fun. It was almost like a, a radio play version of our, <laughs> mm-hmm. of it's our fun to session. Go back and read. You can, and read, you the can whole read the whole thing. And that was, that was really cool. Have yeah. you ever wanted to play D and D all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We didn't pick a time for it. It's just like, it's a lot easier when you get into initiative because it's clearly somebody's turn and whenever they get around to it, they yeah. put their thing in and then you Unless go, but it's literally just like round the clock. Whenever the next person gets around to putting it on, then like that's in there. And then the next person goes and, you're always a little bit in D and D, which has some pros and cons for sure. <laughs> so, there, so th- those are all good tools. Some sort of messenger or Discord or something like that. Doodle, um, Roll Twenty. And let me say, um, you know, your family is always going to be your family. So like, blow off whatever <laughs> dumb thing you have. Your kids like, will be fine whatever. by themselves until your wife yeah. gets home. How many birthdays are you going to have? Like, come on, like let fine. them use the You're stove. You're going to have one every year. Yeah. Yeah. Your two-year-old can bathe themselves. Yeah, like. they'll figure it out. <laughs> Easy Mac, you guys. Easy. <laughs> Well, yeah, let's jump back to the the topic you were bringing up and talking about boundaries and comfort zones and how you figure out uh, what a group is going to be willing or uh, what's what you're going to avoid or what you want to do. Like, what are so as an example with Knights of the Roll Table, mm-hmm. we talked about early on as a podcast sort of mission statement is we wanted something that a lot of us have kids and we want something that our kids can listen to. And you can and, say it, everybody but me. Well. <laughs> But we, you know, we have guest stars that might not have them on as well, and and me and my husband. Yes, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Congratulations. Also impressive. So, we just made a decision that that was important that we want to, as, as far as like language, but lots of subtext. Uh, it's an adult alcoholism. show. Alcoholism. Adult show, but <laughs> it's an adult show. kids could listen to. You, but it's also, it's only adults a problem listen. when I say it's a problem. <laughs> but also, adults could listen to. You you know, if they wanted to mm-hmm. with their, with their kids. Yep. But so if you're just, you know, getting together with people, how do you, what are, what are good ways to bring in up and discuss people's comfort zones? I think there was a good form that somebody put out, um, like a questionnaire that you can even give your group. And if you Google search it, you can find it like a D and D kind of, I want to say consent, you know, questionnaire, um, which goes over things like, you know, what are you okay with? What kind of language? What kind of like different types of um, things that can happen? Um, if you want to play a really adult heavy uh, themed kind of uh, session, like, you know, everybody has to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. That's like, you know what? Get on Craigslist and like find your weird group that way. I'm just, look, <laughs> hey, I, hey, I, hey. look I get it's like there should Jeff. be some consent on this. Like, I get it. But at the same time, it's like, what, what is going on? Like, who watches like Lord of the Rings is, is like, you know what this needs is some real grinded up, <laughs> some real swarminess. Like, no, you're playing Dungeons and Dragons in a basement, bro. Come on. You're rolling dice. It's just, you're going to shoot arrows and like kill ogres. I like, think that's what, what most people want. About? Right. <laughs> 
Oh, well, that's, there's that's all one point of view. These boundaries for these creepers out <laughs> there's, there. There's we need a to lot get of these creepers out <laughs> of the D and D community. I'm sick of these creepers. They're ruining it for us. So leave. <laughs> oh, I was I was actually gonna say. Um, Something and then I totally forgot because Jeff went on a rant. Mm, on a I rant, remember what it was. Well, so no, that- oh, three yeah, more no, things. I, oh my god! I remember what it was now. Um, like, I, I think that it's. Uh, I think the best way to do it is for the DM to talk to each player individually, mm-hmm. like through text or through a phone call, and then to be like, "Yo, is there anything that would make you uncomfortable?" You mm-hmm. know, and then they can really cater like their stories around individuals, and I think that's how adults interact. Like being able to say like, does anything bother you? Should I not bring up X, Y, or Z? I, I noticed that you have a prosthetic. Should I not bring up somebody, you know, losing a limb in this campaign? You know, like whatever it is, talk to individuals about it. And then the DM is in charge and saying like, okay, let's let, let's move past this point. Mm-hmm. Well, and then to tack on to that, you know, I, I know I have a number of friends that, you know, do D&D and LARP and other, other different role-playing things. And, you know, there's always going to be situations that come up that you haven't necessarily planned for or, you know, who would anticipate that this might be a thing or be a trigger. So making sure that you have systems in place <laughs> for people to voice, whether verbally or non-verbally, like, hey, this is going to a place that I'm not okay with not just as a person, not just as a character and like making sure that those systems are in place before you start playing so that they have a way to kind of signal to the DM, like, and if the DM needs to say, Hey, we're going to take 10 minutes and I'm going to talk to this person and, you know, change the course of things, or maybe they need to step out or whatever Mm -hmm. it is, you know, but I think having those systems in place before you start, it just, and it will probably give people security to know that, Hey, you know, I have somebody, this DM is going to listen to me if I'm, Really have yeah. I even issue here. read about a system where you know everybody has a yellow card. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. And that's big, and I think LARP too. Yeah, it's like yellow card, and it just just a visual way of saying I don't need to say it. Just everybody needs to know this is we're getting to a place where it's sensitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so the tool Chris was referencing is from Monty Cook Games. You can actually go to their website and download it for free. And there's like a checklist that's part of it. That really, they list a whole bunch of things, and some things are like sex and violence, but some things are also like bugs, rats, things people <laughs> might sure. be or like, yeah. kind Does of the dog like, die? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I might not be. Yeah, I think it. like uh, children in danger, Don't kill animals my player, in danger. That was a PC. And <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, we kind of we touched on that earlier. Like character death is for sure something you should talk about in session zero, and like realistically i'm not gonna if that's gonna happen to you we're gonna talk about it first and i'll figure it out or yep you could die at any moment any encounter you better be ready like as long as everybody's on board with that and has communication about that is gonna go way better than if you surprise somebody yeah. with that sort of situation uh, so strong disagree all right. <laughs> life is suffering and we should all with it. somebody mute jeff well I, I was i was i was gonna say put that in context you know i'm running a campaign right now with grisat if you know anything about grisat uh he's a very sensual demon uh, mm-hmm. And and it, it and 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 it, it it came to a point where I kind of uh, whenever I'm talking about Grisad or things that Grisad is doing, I'll kind of ease into it so I, I can get a feel for how far I should go, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's and I feel like that's what we do in normal conversation. Like mm-hmm. I, that's what respectful people do uh, in normal conversation. They don't just start with the with the big you know HBO. Opening mm-hmm. foreplay is very important. <laughs> I, I, you know, you you but but you kind of feel it out mm-hmm. um, as a DM, and and maybe being a performer my entire life, that's that's something that I've grown to like read the audience. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, be smart about that kind of stuff. You know, you mm-hmm. you you can have a. A, an adult campaign that is not stepping on anybody's, you know, toes. Well, like so. there's stuff like we've done stuff in just our our text campaign where it's like, okay, these two characters are going to go disappear for a minute. Doesn't need to happen in the room with all of us, you know. But we kind of can infer what maybe went down. Goes dark. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, fade to black, and the, the camera to pans to the window as the and then all of a sudden, just as a DM, have careless whisper queued up and just. <laughs> Something we have uh, from doing live improv is like a lot of direct feedback on what people will react to as okay or not okay, because like you're improvising a show and doing scenes and you kind of like 
walk the line and get up to things and you try a joke now and then and like you definitely get a sense from visceral feedback from a hundred people in front of you reacting either laughing or going dead quiet or even like somebody going Ugh, from like some things that are going to be taken as very funny and empowering and some and like learning when you cross the line in an improv show with a bunch of people in the audience you feel it <laughs> you feel the air go out of the room and you real you understand real clearly like you could and I think I learned pe- the meaning of some words yes, on stage that come up like oh I didn't realize the cultural context of that yep. uh, <laughs> like I think Four people around a table, one person can say something really offensive, and then somebody else could maybe try to bring it up, and then you get into that whole conversation of like, well, that's not how I meant, and I was just trying to make a joke, and blah, 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 and you can have that like sickening kind of conversation where somebody just doesn't want to hear that like you were, you crossed the line, and it wasn't okay with this person, you're making it uncomfortable, you need to own that. When you're in a room (laughs) of a bunch of people, (laughs) you can feel that viscerally, you learn it real, real clear, and it's not about whether it's fair, or it's right, or like, well, why, how come you can say this, and I can't say this, like... That logic doesn't apply because, like, there's something culturally about what you just said that is not, not okay. And also, (laughs) isn't it more fun to just move on? For sure. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, like own get, to, it. get to flinging some arrows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is yeah. what I'm talking about. Get to the business. Orcs attack. The three major ten poles of D and D, as talked about in the community, are you know combat, exploration, and role playing. Mm-hmm. So talking about that, like how people how people are comfortable with role playing. Uh, do they want a lot of exploration? Do they want um, a lot of combat? And kind of where are the balance is with that. Yeah, some logistics of, like, there's lots of things, there's lots of parts of D&D that, especially that some DMs go hard on, like survival, do you need enough supplies, do you need to really figure out, there's 10 days journey between here and here, you got to figure out everything you have. Some DMs will totally blow through that. Yep, you're there. And some will, like, you're doing two sessions of travel, and there's going to be random encounters, (laughs) and there's going to be stuff. (laughs) And both are fine and both are good, but you really want to, like, especially way back in character creation, there's lots of, like, spells and abilities that will really aid you in, like, gathering supplies and stuff, especially for, like, the ranger class. That's a huge one where, like, that's where you shine. And if you really, like, laid into that in character creation and then your DM totally ignores all of that stuff, that's very frustrating and, like, you're Don't take that away from me. (laughs) Let me scavenge. Well, and even like money too. Like we kind of have glossed over, at least in these campaigns, we've really glossed over like cash finance, shopping, inventory. Yeah, I mean, you got yeah. some cash in season two. Yeah, but like, but like, it really hasn't been a, a primary. It didn't really. We're matter. not going on a lot of shopping trips. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Coach did buy a lot of pockets. Yes, he did. Oh. <laughs> I liked the rolling for how many pounds. <laughs> and Jarek's money was stolen. Constitution yeah. saving throw. But he got it back. See if my metabolism can survive. So the Mondica Games thing is not just that initial checklist. It's actually a whole packet called Consenting Gaming that has a lot of different tools and a discussion of kind of how to create safety in your team. And so I actually wanted to use something that's described in there that is pretty much what you were describing earlier with the yellow card thing, which is an X card. So if you're all sitting around the table... You just have a card that has an X on it, and whenever anybody's getting a little bit uncomfortable, you just reach out and touch that, and that shows everybody. And it's not like you have to explain yourself. It's just like, I'm a little uncomfortable, and if I stay here, I'm just letting you guys know I'm a little uncomfortable, or I might get up and walk away and need to take a minute, whatever. I don't have to explain myself, but that's just like a part of the group dynamic and it's also like a visual cue always that like we have this agreement of safety in our group and it matters and we're going to respect that word i'm down with that that's cool we have i think a very like we're very lucky the rapport and the trust that we have built and this is literally coming from years and years of performing Mm -hmm. together and and obviously the i think we have some very innate boundaries already in place because of that I think a lot of groups that have known each other for a long time are like, why would we need these tools? And the fact is, if you've played with people and you know them very well, like you have an agreement, you have a social agreement that's natural between you, probably. You know what you're comfortable with, you're fine with it. When somebody gets upset, you've maybe seen that before and you kind of know why, and you don't need those like more kind of like artificial tools. But if you're getting together with strangers to play in a convention, like you want some assurance that there's something in place to. 
take care of that like, people are going to respect wouldn't. me. I think another really important piece for me thinking about those tools and things as a therapist is like, just because you talk about it in session zero and you lay out, okay, okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to not do. That doesn't mean it's really like, that's the first step of establishing trust in a group and safety in a group. You really have to play it out. And people might not honestly know what's going to bother them until it's bothering them. So you also have to have kind of a group dynamic of like, like the X card, the X card doesn't really like to find anything. It's just like, if something comes up for you, whatever it is, you get a little triggered by something reminds you of something traumatic in your life or whatever, you just show that we're all going to immediately respect, turn off the game for a minute, do whatever needs to be done to get back and, and then come back when you come back. Or maybe that's the end of the session if it has to be whatever. And we bring this up now because you really don't want it to happen and be like what just happened mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the worst i mean that could be the end of your campaign it could be the end of somebody playing D, &D. it's just these are things that you could easily avoid so take take a couple of minutes to take it seriously and get these well, things and even out of just the way having had that conversation yeah. you know somebody that maybe would push the boundaries a little bit more knowing that there's a system in place like it kind of puts that idea in their head of like oh like Maybe I should be mindful of other people's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if somebody goes on a rant about why would anybody want to have uh, sensual interactions in gaming, and one person next to them is like, "Well, I, I kind of want to, kind of maybe want to do it's that." Wrong. You're it's never going to bring that up again. Shame. You're not going to feel safe about bringing that up. D and D <laughs> comes in many no. different forms. It comes in one form: Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. There was fantasy before Lord of the Rings. Nope. <laughs> didn't exist. I don't believe it. <laughs> Started right there. It is. I think that's important. Another critique people will bring around, have you been having a discussion about like having a safe table is like, I want to be able to do whatever I want to do. I want games to be dangerous and violent and real. And that's the kind of world it's going to be. And like, that's exactly what you need. Like in order to do that well, you have to have a discussion and make sure everybody's in, on board with that. Yep. And uh, a lot of, you reference like somebody reference like games ending in session three. A lot of games end at session three, and people just have no, you know, the DM or whoever has no idea why it ended, and they just thought schedules didn't work out or anything. And what it really was for a lot of tables is somebody was like, Wow, I'm not feeling this. I don't like these people. I'm not feeling safe, and I don't want to be there. And it just never gets talked about. So, you or never this really isn't know. fun for me. Yeah, which is fine. And but if you have any chance of like establishing that at session zero, like mm, I don't think so, I don't think I want to do this. Like, don't start investing in this campaign that you're thinking of as epic, because like you know, if I can hear early on like, oh, I'm not for that, I'm out of here, or if I hear like, oh, I didn't think I was for that, but they're laying it out, and I think I'm going to like go in mindfully, knowing that I'm going to have to accept that. There's a much better chance that it's gonna it's gonna work out. I, I have a I have like a real world experience with that mm -hmm. um, where that's actually happened. When I first started uh, playing D anD D, I started playing as a DM, so I, I had never played as a player before, wow. um, which was crazy. And I was do, I was DMing for a group of seven people um, <clears throat> who had also that's too many. Who, who had also never played D anD D before. <laughs> um, so I was uh, DMing, and a couple sessions in, everyone's having a good time. And I wanted to play a very role, uh, like role play heavy campaign. Um, and I thought that's what would make the game most fun for everyone. And at my table, like I lost a player. And I, I technically lost two players because I didn't mitigate that. Because I, I, I didn't take the time to, to like, I, I, in, like I forced upon them what I thought a good campaign was going to be. And five out of the seven people really liked that. They loved it. Mm -hmm. But uh, some of them didn't. And I am still uh, like trying to get, like, I'm, I'm still very good friends with those people, but I'm trying to get those people back into the D&D &D group um, in, in this context of, no, it doesn't have to be the way that I was. <laughs> that was my bad. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Sorry. Th that's, but that's, also, that to be fair, like, you can't always please everybody. No, of course mm -hmm. not. But, but, but I, I, there was, but now, and they have since come back to my campaign, and now they're having fun because mm -hmm. as a DM, I'm not putting the same expectations on them as I am other players who want to do really heavy role play. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like real world actually mm -hmm. happened 
not just up in the air. Yeah, and I think there's a really, I really encourage people like, don't get a group together and then on day one, start your epic campaign. If it's something (laughs) you're invested in, get a group together and do a one shot, especially if people don't know each other and have a couple sessions of just like meeting each other, getting to know each other, even seeing if people's schedules are really going to work. And then once it's feeling like, oh, we like this, this is good. Then pull out your character that you've been designing for six months and (laughs) unroll your campaign that you've been planning in your head for two years because you don't want to start that and just have it fall apart two sessions in. Yeah, you might have a a couple players that are like, we want to fight giants, we want to fight dragons. That doesn't mean that you have to do that episode two, like you could, or session two, (laughs) they get podcasts, Uh, you know, build up to that, be like, cool, cool, okay, and then just work up to that. You know, knowing those things that they've mentioned early on, um, but still kind of give them, you know, uh, hints of things maybe that they have to earn that uh, later on. So on that note, in our campaign, is there are there any things you guys really want to make sure is included in a season or things you are a little bit uncomfortable with? Bring it on, Zach. <laughs> I actually, one thing I would like to have and see how we do it is is kind of a shopping uh, thing. Kind of, Jen mentioned like we haven't really dealt with money too much. And I think uh, going in and using coin w- when we have coin um, to carefully kind of figure out like, ooh, do I want to get this item? In order to get this item, I have to go do something and get some money in order to come back and get something that we've earned. Um, I think narratively we've we've – kind of taken other realms or other routes to mm-hmm. get to a certain place in the story, which is fine. But um, that I think just having a shopping episode, so to speak, uh, is kind of fun in some ways. And, and just dealing with an NPC that's like a shopkeep or mm-hmm. something like that might be kind of fun in the roll table sort of way. I mean, it's not going to be a shocker for any of you, but like for me, it's all I love role play. I mean, combat's cool. But like for me, it's like, how am I going to relate to the people in the world around me? How do I relate to my other teammates? I mean, it's kind of innate in the way I build a lot of my characters too. But Yeah, I mean, I feel like as a group, we really find our best moments in role play. And it's something I'm definitely going to try to like build into season three more that we learned along the lines of season one is like the best moments come in just like opportunities I think season two also just like the players are able to like hang out and talk and chat and like just create a scene themselves or other times when like it's clear that uh, the DM doesn't quite have a plan for this part. Like a few of the episodes like uh, the Great X Escape episode in the Feywild was one where I had very little plan, really didn't know. And that's probably my favorite (laughs) episode because it really was all of you on the spot getting these characters and jumping in and you guys creating the locations along the moss caves was created by, I think Chris offhand added that. And then we like added details. Like so much of that episode was just made up and it's, it's awesome. And so I want to create as much space for that. Yeah. I I think that'd be awesome. More explosions. Explosions. Things didn't explode that much. So great on podcasts. And then it explodes. It explodes. It looks great. Is there anything anything we want to avoid? I, I really like it when combat we- feels very dangerous. Mm-hmm. And I, I think a, a lot of the time, and this is, this is just how I play my own games, but a lot of the time combat just feels like it's kind of in the way. Like, oh, l- let's get through this encounter. That should not be the mindset. The mindset should be, oh, crap. We're, we might die. Mm-hmm. Like, we might not get through this encounter. As as a player, I want to feel that, like, dread. Well, when- and check onto that. Like, even to combat where it's not necessarily we're going to kill these people, but it's like I have an objective. Like, for instance, we were talking in our wrap-up earlier for Season 2 about, you know, the Gus Thorak, and, and we're trying to get the Spiralite, and the goal wasn't necessarily to defeat Gus Thorak, but just, like, we need to get this thing and get it out of there. And I think that that forces some more creativity in the combat, which makes it a little more exciting. Yeah. yeah I think, uh, I think that that brings up a good point. Like not just necessarily we have to go kill and defeat something, although that's fun too, but also like maybe there's times where running away is there might mm-hmm. be the right option. Or maybe um, you have to make that difficult moral decision of like, we have to leave behind a player or, 
or um, we have to negotiate our way out of this. Or so I, I think the skill ch- the, the skill challenge bad guy. <laughs> the, the skill <laughs> challenge was really fun to run um, mm. and and doing it again. I love skill challenges. Doing it again in um, the uh, Go Drawn Ram's Head thing was really fun. Mm. So I think skill challenges. I would love to see. I'm sorry, I didn't do more of them after that. I Tell just... me a story. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a skill challenge too. Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah, that's right. It was so, a role play skill challenge. It was a role play skill challenge. Skill yeah. challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So I think stuff like that is is really fun. Yeah. I was trying to plan in alternate ways to defeat an enemy besides just mm-hmm. the hack know, and slash. Yeah, you have to nix all their HP, whether that's like a chandelier that falls on them or a, you know a pile of logs or something. You know, trying to trying to plan other stuff in the environment that like they can solve or work around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think not having like there's only one outcome of this. They're going to do this thing, and then this is going to happen. Is not a great way to role play, and uh, definitely something I want to push towards. Like multiple outcomes, or like I really don't know what's going to happen, which I think is hard because like you're also planning out. On a, on a podcast, you're planning out, like, I want every episode to be worth listening to, and I want something to happen. But, like, like I said before, the moments where, like, I didn't know what was going to happen are where we've continually shined. So I want to really lean into trusting all of us to figure those things out, for sure. I mean, I really love, obviously, as a DM, I've had a, a couple of cliffhanger endings. Um, <laughs> so I, I also like being part of that. Um, I think uh, cliffhanger endings are are things where, where we're like, oh, we don't know what's going to happen to that character. Like when XX Bloody Heart went away oh, and we were yeah. like, oh no, he got sucked in. And then we just didn't know. You know, It doesn't have to be a character going away. It could be an NPC. It could be an item or, or something like that, you know, like that, that's, that's always kind of fun because then you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> and you just feel like, mm-hmm. um, you know, we really have to resolve this in some way or we have to, you know, follow up with this later. Both mm-hmm. of you guys have been good at finding places where the campaign gets comfortable in something and then throwing a wrench in that. So kudos. I agree. Mm-hmm. Gracias. Thank you. Something that, comes up on my mind in D&D a lot is the nature of like there's all these like mind control spells and charm person and suggestion and definitely you know really going back to the discussion about consent I think that's something that for me that's something that I really want treated kind of the same way as the spells that like shoot a fireball at somebody or anything. I I want characters to think just as carefully about taking over somebody's mind as you would about lighting that person on fire. Oh, we had in season one where I think it was Suggestion. Oh, yeah. That uh, Maya did on, uh, oh gosh. On Sora. On Sora. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, truthfully, she was doing it because she was like, I need to make sure that this woman stays alive Uh because she has a child. But Sora was... I don't think Sora would ever forgive Maya for that. Yeah, that situation was like, yeah, absolutely on the, on the head of like what I'm talking about. Yeah. Of like, there's a lot of pieces of that situation that were like just close enough for me to like not intervene as a DM. That, I'm gonna play counter to you mm-hmm. and say though that that is an that's an, a mechanic of the game, mm-hmm. and that's the spell. And well, like, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, if it was going to a place where, you know, somebody was tapping the X on the mm-hmm. table, yeah, that's when it needs to be discussed. But like, well, yeah, I think know. that's absolutely like that's been a part of like. Is this because you were charmed in season two? Is that what? No, <laughs> oh, kidding. this is coming from a. <laughs> I was fine with that, but I was glad it was me because I don't know if I would have been as fine with somebody else being charmed and kind of like having to play a different character Kishara for a while. You. <laughs> so yeah, I mean there's a lot of things about that that can be great, but it's for sure one of those areas where like a group should talk about that and a group should think about that and kind of like lay out. That's definitely something I would recruit uh, encourage every group to think about when you talk about death, when you talk about like is violent or is fireball funny or is a fireball something that is like really taking somebody's life because that's really like that's the reality you're playing in. You could be in kind of a cartoony reality where like well, you do stuff like that or you don't. 
I will say, I really like the episodes of Super Friends and <laughs> the Avengers where, you know, half the group is mind controlled or the issues of the comics where, like, the X Men are fighting each other. Oh, Temple of Doom, Evil Indiana Jones. Like, <laughs> I learned a lot of things about I love myself that. in that I movie love, when he. I love that people, you know, situations where they're fighting. That's why we did the doppelgangers. Uh, I think that was really fun just to have like character. It's, it's almost verging on battle Royale kind of thing mm-hmm. which you, where you have characters and you're fighting each other. Um, and maybe, you know, there, there's a real threat to that. Um, and that that's, I, I actually like that. Not, I mean, acknowledging the whole mind control thing, but also I think there's a, there's a fun side. to Yeah. That. And I wouldn't say don't do it. I'm just, I would, I would really, what I'm really trying to like bring up is more that like, it's definitely one of those things you should talk about. Yes. It's definitely something you want to make sure that that person is going to think it's just as fun as you do so that you together can like really lay in and yeah. have fun with it, which I think we did when Jarek was mind controlled in other parts. Um, mm-hmm. But it's also for sure one of those things that you could accidentally like really bother somebody with. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Talk about it. I, I, I think mm-hmm. that it, I was going to bring it up in, in the context that I recently discovered within the last year or so that like if two PCs are fighting each other and you've discussed that in the campaign and that's okay. Mm, yeah. Cool. If your friend stabs you with a knife, your friendship is over. Mm-hmm. You, you know, like, so if you slice your friend with a blade or you shoot them with an arrow, the actual role play context of that is your friendship is done. Mm-hmm. So like th- with I, and I think it's coming from the same place. Yeah, it's like, why would you stay together after that? Yeah, yeah, like you're something has to happen now. You guys are done. So we don't think about that from from that that context. And when it becomes something psychological, we tend to dismiss that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I think it's the same conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But also, like literally, you were just saying that you want a campaign that, to feel dangerous. And I can't think of anything more dangerous. And to me, I mean, as a as a performer, I can't help but look at this as a performer. Like that's kind of exciting and fun to be like, oh, my motivation just completely did a one eighty. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a part of it so, being dangerous. You know, oh yeah, so, if you can get shot with an arrow and be like, okay, we're fine now, then that's not yeah. very dangerous. So mm-hmm. I mean, like as far as uh, I think, obviously, yes, talk about it to make your decisions. And I'm voicing now in our session zero, which this is like, again, as I said earlier. Bring it on. Make it complex. Like, let's yeah. get weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with it. Yep. Well, no sex stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hard line. Gross. Listen, okay. this, this will be the least sexiest season ever. Ever. Jeff's new character is an uh, asexual. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, playing Todd from BoJack Horseman. He's, he's yeah. playing a jelly bean with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fight. <laughs> Wait, yeah, let's go. He's fight. a barbarian jelly bean. <laughs> oh my God. Stop. Oh, I already have a cough, guys. Well, last thing I wanted to touch on is uh, Weston's character. <laughs> Jeff's character <laughs> is uh, having a plan for like how you start and how you end. So, like a little bit of a warm up, a cool down, some kind of a ritual. Oh, yeah. And I think we could definitely establish more of that because sometimes we get together and plug things on and chat and eventually we get into it. So, like, some things that a group should definitely do to get going and some things that should definitely do at the end of the night to wind down. So kind of quickly, what are some things to include in kind of like a warm up sort of period? We've done a few in season two. We did a couple of like, here's a cup, here's a role play situation. How would everybody uh, react to that in character? Um, we didn't include that in any of the episodes. It was just for the, it's just for the players just to be like, Hey, what would you guys do? And it's a way to get into character and get into voice and I think that's fun. I got that from Weston. I think that was a that was a fun practice. Mm-hmm. So like a little kind of role play practice warm up sort yeah. of exercise. And there's lots of like really fun prompts online you can use. Tons Find of a, really great resources. A story hook generator. Yeah, I would like. I mean, because one of the things you know that we do in improv is at the end of shows we you know we go through we do notes and we we give like okay these were five good things and it kind of allows you to end on a really positive note i would love to start implementing that Mm -hmm. because sometimes like like you mentioned we've had some really cliffhangers and we've had some incredible moments and then when it's like okay bye and part of it is because sometimes we end so late Mm -hmm. and we're all tired and dead but uh it would be nice to maybe just take a moment and just say hey everybody like let's just go around the table and tell me what your favorite thing was that we did tonight yeah so i think 
two e- parts even of that. if you're not recording i think that's super important just, yeah, uh-huh. just to end on like remind yourself because sometimes like you end and it's like is coach dead or you know who like and you're kind of left with this this ache mm-hmm. and it's like being able to end on that positive note like makes you okay i'm hungry i'm ready to come back for more next time yeah, so there's two separate things there. One is just an emotional check-in of like, how are people doing? Especially if it was kind of like a tense or cliffhangery thing, and then separately talking about like, what were our, what were the highlights of the night? What's one thing that everybody really enjoyed? You can structure that a little bit more, like something that you liked that you did yourself, and also something that somebody else did is a good way to kind of like both. Some people will be more in, much more inherently comfortable complimenting other people and not themselves, and some people vice versa. So that's a good little format. Let's talk about me. <laughs> I think a, a good personal warm up, and we've shared this on our how to DM tips on mm-hmm. Instagram, is uh, is making a playlist of music for your character so that on the way over to your session, uh, like Jen did a good job of making <laughs> some playlists for some of our characters a while back, and that was really fun just to kind of hear like, oh yeah, this is this kind of is this character. And uh, that that's always kind of fun just to mentally, without saying anything, warm up into your character. Too. At me, uh, make my anthem. <laughs> <laughs> Music available. Yeah, so warm-ups, we have like some sort of like role-playing warm-up you might want to do or like group warm-up. It might be kind of like a ritual or whatever. Um, I also want to mention... a pentagram <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> with some candles around it. <laughs> Yeah, any kind of so any kind of ritual you're all comfortable with. Time, two demons. Um, something else is like a like a, a summary of what happened last time, especially if it's been a while. Yes. And I would say specifically, actually, one way to, is that might be good to do that is actually ask the players. So, what was happening, and you as a DM to mm-hmm. see what do they remember? Because mm-hmm. it might be a lot less than what you're hoping for, yeah. or and, more, or way more. <laughs> Sometimes, like things that surprised. you forgot. <laughs> oh yeah, that did happen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I should make something of oh, that. That's right. It also kind of illustrates what the players thought were important and yep. where they're at. Um, and I, but I think also like putting players in the mindset of like what your player would definitely be remembering right now. It's like, remember this just happened, even though it was a month ago, 10 minutes ago in real time for this player, this big epic thing happened. And you're definitely like pondering that is a huge thing. I think also it's a good time to schedule, schedule your next session before everybody's tired and taken off and all uh, other business. Something else to talk about in session zero, I think, is breaks. We didn't mention that. Like oh, yeah. talking about like how are we going to take breaks? How are you going to monitor that? Can anybody say like you might have a different card or like raising a hand to say like, hey, I'm getting to where I need a break, and that's really important because if your group's falling apart, it doesn't matter that you have that epic thing you're trying to get into. It's Standing not going to go up well. And doing a little pee pee dance. Yeah. Or... So for cool down, we talked about go over highlights. Checking in emotionally. Is there other things you'd want to do? Reminding people when you see them next. Reminding people of the schedule. I'd like to have a smoke. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. All right. Well, last thoughts about our session zero uh, or season three to come. Yeah, I think uh, in session zero it might not always happen. But um, can we just talk about character creation? Yeah. Um, we're not. I mean, we already kind of talked about character creation and how to DM, but but that is sometimes something that happens mm-hmm. in a session zero is let's all roll characters together, and it's you know fun. once once we've talked about the world and once we've talked about the type of the types of people that would be the types of races that would be around here, you can certainly play everybody roll your own thing individually and just what do you want to play, and then we all come to the table and it's a potluck. But I think it's also something to be said about. These are some characters, you know, that might mm-hmm. exist in this world together. And it's really fun if you can find some sort of a, a past history with mm-hmm. at least like oh, yeah, one of your story. characters that have um, there's some other systems that that's that's almost encouraged, like fate, where it's like, hey, I know this person somehow, or I know of them, or I know of their clan, or I know of their something. So mm-hmm. having some sort of related backstory, I think it makes really fun. Um and and just it makes sense that these characters would be in the same realm, not just some random, like, I want to play a tiefling because I like horns. And, you know, and it doesn't make sense for the tiefling to be in the realm that you're being in. But what do you think about the quiz at the beginning of the um, holiday thing? Because I was just in that kind of like thinking about, well, how are they going to like have a history together? I thought, I thought that was I don't great. Know. I thought that, that was, was just, like, I was that just was experimenting really, with a, it. I mean, as a listener who was not actually there because I was. Sick and gross. She's feeling better. I am feeling so much better. Uh, 
it was really cool to listen to because I was literally hearing you guys create this history for this group and it allowed you to enter the world with that rapport that you had built. Yeah. And like you even, yeah. there were, I mean, I haven't, I haven't finished the episode yet, but like mm-hmm. you've even already referenced like, oh, remember when we did that political uprising? Like, and it's <laughs> like, yeah, I was there when they decided that that was a mm-hmm. thing that they had done. Like it was, and within a one shot, like, heck yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, I thought that was really awesome. And, and it was a good way it was kind of like a session zero. And I think that's really fun because we, we did the holiday episode starting at level four. So if you yeah. want to jump ahead a couple levels, which is, which is fine. Um, do something like that to be like, Hey, you've already been, t-, instead of just saying you've been together for a while and you've had some adventures. Uh, like I didn't have, want it to be about yeah. figuring out how you work as a group. I wanted you to already work as a group to do it. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think that one thing I would have done differently is I would have made that a skill challenge. Mm. So we could have to used use used our abilities that we had spent so long developing our characters with to solve those problems. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, Instead yeah, of just like totally. Yeah, and yeah, then you roll a die to cool. to figure mm-hmm. out how you do. Like, oh, man, you just nailed that. Like, you're the perfect person to do that. Or like, hey, Des finds himself in an awkward situation where he has to do some public speaking. You know, you know like, <laughs> yeah. uh-oh, you know. Yeah. So, okay. Cool. Yeah, I think characters meeting each other, players getting to know each other's characters, and even there's a dynamic of you getting to know your own character is always going to be awkward and weird, and that was a great way to drag us through a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I I always want to say, because we're playing Dungeons & Dragons, I want to make sure we're rolling dice. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, if, if, if it's been, like, 45 minutes and nobody's rolled any dice, it's like, what are we doing? <laughs> I mean, we're just acting at that. Story time! <laughs> Which is cool. Like, that's yeah. that's cool. Acting. but Yeah. Yeah, I cool. think... All right, that's, that's, anyway. that's all I... It was, it, it was great. It was great. I, I, I loved it a lot. To, yeah. to bring up. Listen yeah. to the holiday episode, everybody. Yeah. yeah. I was going to mention earlier, I think, when you're role-playing a lot, like, remember, especially as a DM, to call for checks. There's persuasion checks and charisma checks and performance, performance. checks yeah. and so many things you can do. Like, keep that in there to, like... Throw things up Spot and make check. people deal Tell with me. new stuff. <laughs> Animal hand. Oh, Jeff, you make these jokes about five feet away from your microphone, <laughs> and no one's going to hear them. They're just for me. Uh, another piece. Another piece to talk about is like: Can a character roll a persuasion or an intimidation check against another character? Mm. Which I generally don't like because I don't want to take away the p- player agency. agency. But it's definitely one of those things you should talk about as a group and see what you're good with. Um, and to figure out as a DM what, sometimes you might not know this, but if you know things as a DM that would bother you, um, like if somebody says insight check as <laughs> instead yeah. of instead of can I tell what, what I they're think thinking? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there there's a, a way to phrase a certain thing. You don't just say like I'm going to roll an investigation check. No, no, I tell you to roll an investigation <laughs> check. Uh, yeah. You say, can I you see anything? Off. Can I find any clues? It's my and then, job. And then let me say what kind of check as a DM to have you roll. Yeah. So a little like yeah. rule things like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a session zero. Yeah, hard. Mm-hmm. You don't tell me to roll. <laughs> I tell you what to do. You got it? Well, something to wrap up, something I want to do in season three is really like we've met two different groups of people now. And I think in the structure of our podcast where we're creating this world and people in it that come and go, I really want to explore ways of how we do that and how characters come in and how we really can lean in on our our improv strengths. And so uh, we're going to do that starting at the very first episode, which we are now going to record. But you, uh, if you're listening to this, like right up at the moment, and if you are, thank you. That'll air uh, next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have fun with season three. Go out and make life an adventure. I never get to say. <laughs>